Hello and welcome everyone to another Community Connections cooking demonstration. So excited that you can join us today. Uh, we have an incredible guest. Um, and if you had a chance to, to uh, watch earlier, you would have uh, uh, seen a little bit of Ian and his uh, inspiring story. Um, but Ian is live with us now. This is our first international virtual cooking demonstration. So Ian, thank you so much for joining us. Um, first, I, for those that didn't watch the demonstration, maybe you can tell us a little bit about yourself and um, sort of your inspiration for your new cookbook. Thank you, thank you so much for having me. It's, it's such an honor to be with you, it really is. Um, yes, yeah, so I'm Ian Tavener. I live in the south of England with my wife, my two young daughters and our little dog. Can't miss him out because he'll probably come running in any minute now. Um, I had a fairly traditional career in financial services for 20 years and then unfortunately my health started to deteriorate um, with physical and, and mental illnesses which uh, eventually meant I had to give up work unfortunately. So for about seven or eight years and now I haven't been able to, to work. However, um, so I've been suffering with fibromyalgia and arthritis, which is on the physical side, which then have associated um, anxiety and depression as well. Um, so for a number of years, it was very, very difficult. Um, but then I got some really excellent health from the, the health service over here. Um, and that was about two years ago. And I decided that cooking was the thing that was going to really give me some some passion back in my life, a roll back, some pride in myself, I guess. Um, and that's what I set out to do. Um, it wasn't very easy, things weren't going that well. Um, but I I decided that, well, if I need to change the cookbook, I'll write one myself and see what happens. So I did. And uh, I wrote Cookfulness um, really to, to help people through the, the sort of various barriers that get going away when you look at the best books, anything from and looking at the glossy photos and I can't make that through to, you know, there's just not enough time or I, I just genuinely can't cook anything. So I've tried to do all of those things based on my own trials and tribulations, I guess. And, uh, and, and the book's been out um, just coming up to a year now and, it, and it's just going, going amazingly well. So I'm delighted. Well, again, thank you for, for joining us and thank you for sharing. Um, the cookbook is amazing. The recipes are fantastic. Um, and I really love some of the tips and the strategies that you provide um, that I think allow for a lot of forgiveness in the kitchen, which I don't think most people give themselves. Um, and I, I just think that's super refreshing um, and probably very encouraging for, for a lot of uh, people that are intimidated to cook uh, because of maybe some of the challenges or barriers that they have. So love that. I want to bring some attention just to one of the first pages in there that I came across that seems almost like a, this, this mindfulness exercise that you were saying that you run through almost every time before you start cooking. And I was wondering if you could take us through that as well. Yeah, sure. I, and, and this genuinely, I do this every time I, I cook because no matter how many times I know I, I've done it, I still get the anxiety, the nerves, the oh, I'm going to make a mess of this. And, and it's almost like the, the first step stops you from, from carrying on or, or from sort of fulfilling what it is you know you want to do. So I, I sort of, I call it recookfulness in yourself. Um, so basically, so right now I'm thinking, right, I'm talking to you, I'm talking to you, again, and then this is getting a bit scary. So I need to sort of do that to myself now anyway. So really all I do is just, as in mindfulness, just talking about the here and now you're just talking about what's going on in yourself so i just close my eyes take a couple of very deep, deep breaths in and out and just let the air flow through to start with just listen to what's going on around you there could be the oven going there could be anything just listen to what's happening and then what i do i visualize my family around the table um they're all laughing and joking and they're eating my food and I'm serving my food, and that gives me that sort of warmth of, okay, I can do this. I'm feeling nervous, I'm a bit anxious, but I can do this. So I'm going to breathe, 
little bit more and I'm going to keep that picture in my head of that, that happy place. And then when I open my eyes, that, that's still there. So I know now that I can breathe, I can do this, and I know that no matter what I bring to that table, they're going to be happy because that because I'm I'm bringing it to. Them. That's the point. It's not about what food I call the fact that I've done. It. So that's you can go for as long as you like, but I try and breathe through it for a couple of minutes. But I don't think you want to see sit and watch me breathing for two minutes. <laughs> no, I think it's brilliant, and um, you know, really happy that you were able to share that. I think that could be helpful. That's you know something. Even for myself, who I've you know, been in the kitchen and been cooking for, for a while now, I don't often take the time to go through that uh, sort of exercise and that, that, that you know, mindful cooking piece. And um, I think that's it's really important, especially you know, where we're, most of us are in a rush or uh, you know, too busy and don't have the time. And, and the cooking process, which should be an enjoyable experience, you know, it's, it's not for most of us because it's it's more of just a task, a chore, get it done, get food on the table, um, and uh, you don't get a lot of it. So I, I think it's a great exercise. Wonderful. Love that you share that. With that being done, let's jump into it. You're going to lead us through a couple of recipes. I'm going to try to make one of your recipes as well. Um, what are we starting with? Yeah. Okay, so we're going to start with a ham and egg bake. And now my whole food philosophy is Find something that's good, something that you can make and you know you can make it and then you can tweak it. So you start to play with it and do little things with it. Once you've got the basic there, you can do all kinds of things with it and create lots of different dishes. So none of this is rocket science. I'm not a Michelin star chef. I'm not even a chef. I just cook and I love it. So the ham and egg bakes, it's festive time of year. You can use these for a little party or if you're allowed one, of course. Um, you can have these as a starter for anything, or just as a little snack. They're delicious, so and they're very, very easy. All you need is one tin, and this is my trusty little naked <laughs> muffin tin, um, and that's the only piece of equipment you're going to really need. Um, so to make them, all you need is some ham, and I've got some decent quality ham. You'll see why you need that. Some free-range eggs, a little bit of cream. Salt and pepper, and then a couple of bits of flavorings to go in it. So we'll start with showing you how, how you begin. I'm going to make four here just to show you the different foods. So, firstly, just a little bit of oil in each of the little holes, and just give it a little rub around all the sides, etc., because otherwise, you'll end up with an egg mess because it'll just stick. And believe me, I know because I've done it many times when I forgot the oil in. Um, yeah, okay. so, and then some ham. Now, the reason is go for some reasonable quality ham is that you don't really want lots of holes um, because this is going to be the little cup that the eggs can go in. So, literally, you just put it over the hole and push it in gently, nice and in, and it'll fold over itself a little bit. And you're just looking to make a little cup. And do them for as many as you want to do. I'll make four here just so you can see what's going to happen with the flavors. And you literally just push it down. If you do get a hole and you might get a tear, like it's just happened to me, then just get another piece of ham from something and just pop it over the top. It'll plug the gap. It'll be fine. So we're in. All four. Are you in? Are you, are you with me? Yeah, very I'm good. Going, I'm, one of my torn to pieces, so I'm going three, but <laughs> I think we're good. So, next thing, some eggs. So, basically, just a decent free range egg and break it into what you've just made with ham. And then just put them in. When I said bake, you can see it's a ham and egg bake. I love it, yeah. And in they go. Beautiful. It looks pretty as well, which is always important. It? I love, yeah, I love it. And I also love that you're using one tray, like you're using a muffin tin instead of a pan for the eggs, a pan for the bacon, you know, making a, you know, you know, more mess to clean up afterwards. I love that it's compact into this one little muffin tin here. 
it's all about making this more fun. And like we said at the beginning, it's got to be an enjoyment uh, process. Otherwise, what you know, it's not worth it. So next thing, a little bit of cream. So I've just got some single cream, just a little tiny bit on the top of each egg. That'll just help to thicken it up when it goes in the oven. And what kind of cream um, are you using? Yes. Is it like a 10%, 20? Yeah, it's just 10%. 10%, okay. You can go down lower. Um, if you go any higher, it will be a bit flaggy. So, but it's good to have these. Then all literally is salt and pepper on the top of each. So a little bit of salt and pepper. Oh, I love that. Is that uh, electric? Is that an electric uh, salt and pepper grinder you have there? Yeah, these, uh, I got these from a company. They're brilliant. They're just they're just a one touch thing and um, they're non-slip. So I my hands are I find it quite hard to grip things. So these are great um, and uh, they don't take much much doing. So I actually had the same salt and pepper grinders for about 15 years and they finally gave up on me. Um, but I got these. Now I do okay. tend to hoard my good equipment. <laughs> so, Salt and pepper on the top. Now, if you put them in the oven right now, fantastic. Um, they're delicious. But what you can do is is add a little bit of different flavours to these. So I've got some chili flakes here. Just put a few on the top, a little bit of heat. Uh, obviously, if you don't like the heat, don't add them. Um, you could add some smoked paprika, which is also lovely. In the Or I've also got some garam masala for a slightly sort of um, Indian twist that can go on the top. And you could put um, basically anything. You could put hot sauce, Tabasco, some sweet chili sauce, anything you like on them. Just have a go and experiment with them and see, see what flavors you like and what you don't like. If you get nine out of ten you don't like, we'll focus on the one that you do like, not the nine that you did. <laughs> and then, you know, just, just have a go. So these basically, you just put them in the oven. Uh, so that's 180 degrees centigrade, 350 Fahrenheit for 10, 12 minutes, uh, just until they're, so you don't want them rock hard, um, but they'll just wobble a bit. And then when you when they come out, just let them cool, but actually you'll be able to lift the whole ham cup out of, and it'll be in its own little container. And actually just serve them as they are, and away you go. And they're absolutely delicious. I tried making a couple earlier, Ian, so we'll, I'll try to lift them out so we can show. Uh, but again, I love the idea that you can customize each one. So even if you're making, you know, a few for the family, someone doesn't like chilies, you know, you put chilies in one, you know, put some herbs in the other. Yeah, these come out, so the little bit of oil at the beginning is really helpful. So great tip there. And these pop out and they're just like gorgeous. I love these little cup ideas. Amazing. This is a perfect little, you know, protein bite to get you started. Um, and it, I mean, I guess you could freeze. Could you? Have you tried freezing these before? Yeah, you can. Absolutely. Yeah. Just freeze them once they've gone cold and then just let them come back to room temperature. You can warm them up in another microwave and you can put them away. Uh, absolutely. That's lovely, and I know you're a big fan of the freezer. Uh, I think we we both tweeted about it as well. So I guess you know those days where you know maybe you have a little bit more energy or you have some help, you know, batch cook like a dozen of these, and and then you can pop it in the freezer for for those days where you're just not feeling like cooking in the morning. But uh, I love that, amazing. And you can you can just batch cook all of the, the the plain ones without the various toppings on. And then you can do what you like. You might feel like something today that you didn't tomorrow. So, you know, just just do what you want to stick on the top of things. And that's the great thing about these is the recipe's there, but, you know, do what you want with it. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. I love this. Amazing recipe. Uh, great one to start off. Might as well start off with a breakfast one.